हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम संजय गुप्ता आई वेलकम यू ऑन संजय गुप्ता टेक्स स्कूल सो इन माय प्रीवियस वीडियो आई एक्सप्लेन यू एल्गोरिदम एनालिसिस सो आई डिस्कस विद यू स्पेस कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी एंड टाइम कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी सो देयर यू अंडरस्टूड हाउ वी कैन मेजर स्पेस कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी एंड थ्रू थ्री डिफरेंट वेज वी कैन आइडेंटिफाई टाइम कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी दैट आर बेस्ट केस एवरेज केस एंड वर्स्ट केस so after watching that video now you can understand algorithm efficiency uh, with this video so starting my explanation for algorithm efficiency so explaining first point uh, which says if a function is linear without any loops or recursion the efficiency of that algorithm or the running time of that algorithm can be given as the number of instructions it contains so however if an algorithm contains certain loops or recursive functions then the efficiency of that algorithm may vary depending on the number of loops and the running time of each loop in the algorithm so first uh, jo sorry first paragraph is saying like like we don't have any loop or recursion and second paragraph or second point is saying we have loop or recursion so accordingly we can uh, identify the efficiency of algorithm based on number of steps those are uh, available in that algorithm so if we don't have any loop then uh, efficiency will be different but if we have loops or recursion then efficiency will be different so as per third point the efficiency of an algorithm is expressed in terms of the number of elements that has to be processed so this is also important a number of elements so if n is the number of elements then the efficiency can be stated as function of n equals to efficiency so n is the number of elements on which we are going to apply algorithm and in that algorithm if you are having loops then its efficiency will be different and if you are not using any loop then its algorithm will be sorry its efficiency will be different so uh here uh, in first point if you focus again so it is saying the efficiency of that algorithm or the running time of that algorithm can be given as the number of instructions it contains right but uh, for uh, the algorithm which contains loops or recursion so for that different cases to determine efficiency of algorithms are available here so here you can see in each point loop is uh, available so we can have linear loops we can have logarithmic loops we can have nested loops like linear logarithmic loops quadratic loops and dependent quadratic loops so based on the these six points now i am going to explain how uh, you can identify your algorithm efficiency so first point is linear loops so in case of linear loop here you can see the first point to calculate the efficiency of an algorithm that has a single loop we need to first determine the number of times the statements in the loop will be executed so with this example you will understand how we can identify the efficiency of linear loops so this loop will repeat 100 times and 100 times the statements will be executed so here 100 is the loop factor hence the general formula in the case of linear loops may be given as function of n equals to n right so if we need to uh, process n elements so its uh, efficiency will be equals to n then here you can see example number 2 here increment is uh, done with 2 and condition is 100 so 0 to 100 but increment is done by 2 so here the number of iterations is just half the number of loop factor so here the efficiency can be given as function of n equals to n by 2 right so as per the iteration of loop we uh, we are identifying the efficiency of the algorithm so in first case efficiency is n in second case it is n by 2 and uh, in both the case function of n is performing so this way we can identify the linear loops efficiency based on the number of times loops are executing then our next case is logarithmic loops so in linear loops the uh, loop update either adds or subtracts 
However, in logarithmic loops, the loop controlling variable is either multiplied or divided during each iteration of the loop. So here you can see uh, loop is iterating 100 times, but uh, it seems like it will be iterating 100 times. But here, if you see this uh, increment part, so here i into equals to 2 is mentioned. So it means i equals to i into 2. So every time it will be, i will be multiplied by 2. So in the above loop, in which the loop controlling variable i is the i is multiplied by 2. So after each iteration of the loop, the loop will be executed only less than 10 times and not 100 times. So therefore, we can conclude that the efficiency of loops in which iterations divide or multiply the loop controlling variables can be given as log n. So in previous case, you saw where loop was executing 100 times, so it, it was equals to n because uh, we are uh, considering n as 100. So its efficiency will be uh, n. But in second case, loop was repeating n by two times. So number of elements was 100, but uh, loop was iterating n by two times. So its efficiency was n by two. Here again, uh, n is 100, but its uh, loop is iterating uh, less than 10 times. So its efficiency will be log n. So in the case where loop is uh, loop uh, iteration variable is multiplied or divide, uh, multiplied or divided. So in that case, you can uh, use this kind of efficiency like log n. So this way, I hope you understood uh, two scenarios, linear loops and logarithmic loops. Now, uh, third is nested loops. So loops that contain loops are known as nested loops. In order to analyze nested loops, we need to determine the number of iterations each loop completes. The total is then obtained as the product of number of iterations in the inner loop and the number of iteration in the outer loop. So this is the formula. We need to multiply inner loop iteration with outer loop iteration so that uh, total number of iterations can be calculated. Uh, here you need to note one thing. In this case, we analyze the efficiency of the algorithm based on whether it is a linear logarithmic, quadratic, or dependent quadratic nested loop. So uh, this this was about nested loops. Now we are going to understand these three uh, types: linear logarithmic, quadratic, and dependent quadratic loops. So first is linear logarithmic. So uh, I already explained you linear and logarithmic separately. If, if I go back, so this was linear and this was logarithmic. Now we are going to combine both. So consider the following code in which the loop controlling variable of the inner loop is multiplied after each iteration. So the number of iteration in the inner loop is log 10. This inner loop is controlled by an outer loop which iterates 10 times. So therefore, according to the formula, the number of iteration for this code can be given as 10 log 10. So here you can see outer loop is iterating as linear loop and inner loop is iterating as logarithmic loop. And together we can say this is as linear logarithmic loop. So outer loop is iterating n time and inner loop is iterating log n time. So the efficiency of such loops can be given as n log n, right? So function of n equals to n log n. So n is n will be the uh, elements. So if I go back, so here you can see uh, n is the number of elements. Then the efficiency can be stated as so. Everywhere we are using f of n as same, and uh, efficiencies are different as per the uh, number of loops and how we are incrementing or uh, how we are controlling the loop variable. So accordingly, the efficiency is uh, measured. So this was about linear logarithmic loop. Now, next one is quadratic loop. So in a quadratic loop, the number of iterations in the inner loop is equal to number of iteration in the outer loop. So uh, we can also say like both the loops are uh, running linearly. So this becomes quadratic loop. So consider the following code in which the outer loop executes 10 times and for each iteration of the outer loop, the inner loop also executes 10 times. So therefore the efficiency here is 100. So 
so the generalized uh, formula for quadratic loops can be given as n square so if both the loops are uh, executing a similar number of times they are iterating similar number of times and they are uh, implemented as nested so then efficiency will be n square so for n input the efficiency will be n square because we are implementing this kind of loop right so number of inputs are same here as well f of n but efficiency is different because you are applying different kind of loop here so uh, this way i hope you are understanding if you are using a particular type of loop in your algorithm then according to that loop your algorithm efficiency will be calculated so uh, let's say uh, to uh, solve any problem uh, if you are using two methods in one method you are using a uh, linear loop one loop and uh, in another method let's say you are using a uh, two nested loops so in both the cases your algorithm efficiency will be different and you need to use whose efficiency is uh, less L like uh, whose efficiency is best right so let's say a uh, linear loop is providing efficiency as n and quadratic loop is providing efficiency as n squared so obviously you need to focus on the n because that is more efficient or uh, more uh, to be used in your algorithm as compared to n square algorithm efficiency right and last one is dependent quadratic loops so here you will see one loop will be dependent upon the another loop so in the dependent quadratic loop the number of iterations in the inner loop is dependent on the outer loop so i hope you implemented these kind of loops while implementing patterns in c language so consider the code given below which shows such as uh, such an example so first is uh, iterating 10 times and second is dependent upon the value of i so in this code the inner loop will execute just once in the first iteration twice in the second iteration thrice in the third iteration and so on so inner loop a uh, number of rotations are totally dependent upon the value of i that is uh, controlling in first loop so in this way the number of iterations can be calculated as so this this is the iteration for in a loop 1 2 3 4 5 up to 10 and uh, total is 55 right so if we calculate the average of this loop so it will be 55 upon 10 equals to 5.5 so we will observe that it is equal to the number of iteration in the outer loop plus 1 divided by 2 so this way in general terms the inner loop iterates n plus 1 by 2 so n is the number of rotation of outer loop we are adding 1 and dividing the whole by 2 so therefore the efficiency of such a code can be given as so for n number of inputs uh, your algorithm is uh, uh, giving this efficiency that is n into n plus 1 by 2 so here first n is indicating number of iteration for outer loop and it is multiplied with n plus 1 by 2 which is the efficiency or number of iteration of inner loop so this way uh, this dependent quadratic loop uh, algorithm efficiency uh, can be calculated so this is how uh, uh, you need to calculate algorithm efficiency while implementing any algorithm in data structure so i hope you understood all the scenarios that i explained in this video so uh, if you want to calculate uh, efficiency of function of n so where n is the number of elements and as per your uh, algorithm code or algorithm steps like you are using how many loops or uh, without loop you are implementing that algorithm you can identify the efficiency of that algorithm so uh, with this explanation i am going to conclude this video so uh, also watch my previous video so that you can also understand like uh, the difference between space and time complexity and after watching that you will surely understand this uh, like how we can uh, identify algorithm efficiency so that you can write better algorithms while implementing the solution of any problem so if you want to watch more uh, data structure related videos uh, or data structure implementation with c so you can go to description of this video where you will find uh, playlist links and also at the end of this video you will find those links as well so you can follow those playlists so that you can understand uh, the data structure and algorithm concepts well 
so i hope uh, you understood whatever i explained in this video thank you for watching this video